start recording. Okay, so we are on page 1-103. What we want to do is we want to place some little tapped holes on this side of the part. But in order to locate them, we want to use the center axis for this front hole. Okay, and we can do this by turning on the visibility of temporary axes. All right, so to do that, you're going to go to the view ribbon, view menu right here. See where it says view on the on the menu. And under view, notice you can enable or disable the disability of different things, and we want to enable the visibility of temporary axes. So you go view temporary axes and notice you see these little blue axes for anything that's got an arc, slot, or hole. Do you see that? Was everybody able to turn on the visibility of their temporary axis? Is there anybody who had problems? Okay, is there anybody who needs help? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to place a hole. So we're going to select this face, all right, and we're going to go to the hole wizard. Okay, so I'm going to select select that face so it highlights. Come on. There it is. Okay, so I selected that face and then I went hole wizard. There's a little bit of a brief pause while it goes and it accesses the database. And I want to go normal too, so I'm going to click on my normal too. I can also go control 8. There it is. Alright, so I'm normal too. I'm on page 1-104. I want to go to the straight tapped hole. It's going to be ansymmetric. I want to say um, bottoming tapped hole. Okay, I'm going to scroll down. I want it to be an M3 by 0.5, so that's correct. I want it blind, 7.5 and 6. Okay, so. So these are all my settings, ansymmetric, bottoming tap toll, and 3 by 0.5, blind, 7.5, blind, 2 times diameter, 6 millimeters. Now if anybody's having any problems getting to this dialog and getting it set up, raise your hand, Ron will help you. Question? I have an extra option that says with red call out your side conversation. Okay, this this right here is these options right here. Yeah. Okay, you want to have thread class and near side con countersink unchecked. I usually put a check on with thread call out, and what that means is that when I add my note in my drawing my note will call out the thread, which is helpful to the guy who's actually creating the hole, right? So I normally have that enabled, but I have the other things disabled, right? So now I'm going to remember we have two tabs. The first tab lets us define the type of hole, but the second tab tells us where to locate the hole. So we want to select that second tab where it says positions, remember we're back to center holes. All right. Now on the bottom of page 1-104, she shows you how to locate it. Notice I've got that little asterisk next to the cursor. That's the center point for my hole. I want to place the hole just a little bit below that axis point. That this temporary axis, I want to put it just a little bit below, and then I'm going to right click. Whoops, I right click too far. I want to go back to edit feature, so I can still, I still need to dimension it. So I'm going to come back to my dimensions. I'm going to right click, select, select. So I've placed that hole, but now I need to add some dimensions. 
Um, she's got it dimensioned so from this edge to here is 25. And then she's also done a dimension from the temporary axis to the center point, and that's four. Okay. So if you're having problems placing those two dimensions and need help, raise your hand. Okay, so we've got our hole and we're going to green check. Okay, and you can see our hole. If I switch to um, a wireframe, you can see, I'm going to switch to a front view so you can kind of see. See how that hole comes really, really close to that, to that center hole? Okay, so you want to be able to see that so because you don't want it to bleed through and create problems now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a linear pattern what's called a linear pattern or an array of that hole and remember how we did the mirror where we could pre-select and then select the tool do you remember that you can do the same thing with the array where we can pre-select and then select the tool. So I can highlight this hole and then select linear pattern up here on the ribbon. So I can select the feature in the browser, right? Everybody knows that this is called the browser. And then select the tool up on the ribbon. And I want, notice there's a little drop down arrow here. I can do linear pattern, circular pattern, mirror, curve, sketch, table, fill pattern. So there's all sorts of different kinds of patterns you can create. We want to do a linear pattern. Linear patterns basically rows and columns. Okay, and notice because I pre-selected it, it automatically filled in, in in that box where it says features to pattern. Do you see that? Now if you don't if you don't pre-select it, let's say I didn't pre-select it, I don't have anything selected, and then I go to linear pattern, well now for my features to pattern it's blank. And how do I select the features to pattern? I have to click in this box and then I can come over and I can try and select the hole, right? And then it'll fill in. But s notice there's a certain amount of delicacy to pick the hole and not the face. A lot of users have, have problems with that. Or I can expand that plus button right here and select it right here. And that'll fill it in, right? Or, I can drag it down here and select it, and that will fill it in. So there's a bunch of different ways to get to it, right? But now we need to look at how we're going to pattern it. You want to be on page 1-106. Alright, we've got, we want to create two directions, direction one and direction two, because we're going to have rows and columns. So notice we have direction one here and direction two here. And to select a direction, we put our mouse in this box for direction one, and then we select an edge. So I'm going to select this top edge right here. So I select that edge and notice it automatically fills in the edge right there. And I say how many I want. I want to do three 10 millimeters apart. And notice I can set it to do a full preview or a partial preview so I can see what it's going to look like. 
You see that? And notice I've got an arrow right here to show the direction of my pattern. So that's direction one, but I also have a direction two for the rows. This direction one dealt with my columns. Direction two is for my, if I want to do more than one row. So I need to notice that direction two is highlighted here. So, so, th so it's asking what edge do I want to use to align my pattern to. So I'm going to select this side edge right here. And notice that the arrow is going down. I want the arrow to go up. So to flip the arrow, I can do it a couple of different ways. Way number one, I've got this little toggle button right here. You see that little button? So I can click on that button and that flips the arrow. Notice the arrow direction changed. And I want two rows 12 millimeters apart. So I'm going to go 12 millimeters. All right. Now my other way, and it's previewing me, now my other way of flipping the arrow, if I wanted it to go down, is I can also just click on the arrow. And that also flips it. So I can either click on the arrow or click on the button. They both do the same thing. Okay? So it's previewing it and then I'm going to green check. And this is what my pattern is. And I'm just going to rename this small holes. And I'm going to save it. Now on page 1-107, she asks you to apply some materials and look at the mass properties. Now I don't normally ask you to do that. I know in a lot of drawings she gives you the properties and she wants you to look at materials. On the CSWA, you are going to have to apply materials and look at mass properties. So to apply a material, you just come over here to where it says material. Now the cool thing about the CSWA is when you right click, it normally will only ask you for materials that are on the right click menu. You see that? In the book she says, well, I want you to give it AISI 304, which is not on the right click menu. So how do you get that? AISI 304. You go to Edit Material and under Steel you can find AISI 304. And what I found is these numbers here are not always correct. So, no, it's true. I mean, so if you really are going to rely on these numbers for any kind of structural analysis, you got a hand back there, Ron, behind you. Um, if you're really going to rely on those for doing any kind of finite element analysis, make sure you go to matweb.com or consult another um, place to verify that those numbers are, are correct, because they're not always correct. and and. If you're, if you're really, a lot of times if you're doing something critical, it could make a big difference between fail, whether the part has a, meets safety factor criteria or not. So, um, so I highlight the material I want, which is AISI 304, which is type of steel, fairly common. I hit apply and close. And notice as soon as I do that, now under material it says AISI 304. See that? That's very cool. So it's showing me the material that's in applied. And the color will change depending on what material you apply to it because different materials have different color properties to them. It's supposed to make it look more realistic. All right. Now, if I wanted to go to mass properties to see how much this part would weigh, and a lot of times people care about how much stuff weighs. Why? Because you've got to sh pay for shipment. And if you've got to pay FedEx or UPS to ship the parts, 
how much it weighs comes into play in terms of a factor. A lot of times you want a light material, especially for something that's getting mounted to a roof. You know, sometimes you want a heavier material, sometimes you want a light material, kind of depends on what it's doing. Right, so if you go to evaluate, right here, the evaluate tab on the ribbon, one of the things you can see right here is mass properties. And you click on mass properties, and it shows you the weight in grams, the volume, and the center of mass. The center of mass comes into play again on the CSWA exam because you'll be asked to create a part and then modify the part. And if you don't create it or modify it correctly, a lot of times with assemblies, they want you to kind of position the assembly a certain way. If you've done it correctly, you'll get the right center of mass and you'll get the right weight. Question. Okay, for units, for the drawing or in the BS, if this is showing data in which is why would it be in the BS? Okay, well, my, mine is showing, I'm, I'm showing center of mass in inches, right. Right, so I can, I can look at my options right here, and it says use document settings. I can also say use custom settings and say I want to use um, millimeters and so you can you can change how you want it to appear and then and then you just hit that and then notice this changes right okay so I'm going to save my guide support Any questions about the guide support?